Well done, MJ. Thanks. <laughs> and this will go into the cloud, right? Because I'm afraid that I'll somehow mess this up. <laughs> Love this song, Charles. Great pick. On the merry go round. Yeah, volume is fine if that was your concern. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. We gon' walk it out and move on days. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day. I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid. I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand eight times again. Such a powerful song. Thank you so much for choosing that, Charles, or whoever it was that threw that playlist out there. Um, my heart right now is like racing. And there's a lot of layers that are that that's kind of like making it feel the pressure. But you know, Diane mentioned it um, in regards to the reaction to Texas. A lot of it is. Um, I know a few months ago we we did a special community event to, uh, to honor RBG. And we created a space to be in community and to have a space of reflection. 
And I remember in that particular space, there was just a lot of weariness as to what that meant and what vulnerabilities that created for democracy, for women, for the Supreme Court. And it's unfortunate that it's slowly but surely being played out. And the biggest blow to that is the decision in Texas. So I want to create space again for some of us to reflect on it, get some reactions, but I don't want that to shadow the hope and the light that this community space tonight is going to really bring to our organization, to our work, and to our community members who chose to really stay committed to this. Um, we are going to meet, and if you haven't already met the rising leaders that are in our organization, you're going to see a lot of young faces tonight, which I really hope is going to give you the hope and the light that you are going to need in the next coming weeks and the next coming months and the next coming year as to what these folks are really doing and how they're holding up the baton in the way that they are holding it to continue this fight. So at the very end of this uh, meeting, I know we have a lot to cover this evening. Welcome to everyone. It's really good to see your faces on these squares. Um, lots of young faces, like I said, that are joining us this evening. Um, but at the end of this, when we cover all the good stuff, we are going to create a space at the end. If you want to stay um, a little bit longer than the six o'clock mark to join us in this in the space to just talk about what what happened recently with the Texas State Ledge um, and just some reactions and some uh, just a space for you guys to just like let the pressure go. We'll be here. I'll be here. We'll be joined by some staff members as well. You're more than welcome to stay. Um, but we're going to park that because uh, we have so much to cover at this monthly meeting every first Thursday of every single month. And I can't wait for you to hear all the stuff that we have to share with you. So I'm going to kick this off to Charles. Thank you for that, Larcy. Um, yeah, me too. That that song. Uh, <laughs> it's one thing to know what something sounds like logically. It's another thing to feel it. Same with the moment, um, to read about it. Um, but to be in it and to feel it is a totally different thing. And uh, a lot of power in that song, a lot of power in this moment, um, a lot of power in this room. And we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that. Uh, thank you, Larcy. Okay. Uh, so just want to let everybody know I'm running this meeting today, like both like verbally and technically. So if there's anything that is <laughs> not up to usual uh, snuff, it's because uh, the capable hands of Maggie um, nor Hibba are, are on this. It's just me doing a bunch of this. So um, hold on, hold on tight. It gets better at the end. Okay. Just like every good movie, every good book, it'll get better at the end. Um, you all can see this is our agenda for the day. I want to, Hibba, what, can you give people a direction on how they can see both the slides and each other? Because the, the key feature of these meetings are all the people that are here. And I feel like when we show a slide, we miss out on some of that. So how's the, what's the best way to get to the, the gallery view? Plus slides. Yeah. Yeah, happy to. So um, folks who are um, on their computer should be seeing at the top of their screen, a green bar that says you are viewing Charles's screen. Um, if you click view options, uh, you'll see at the very bottom uh, of the menu, it says side by side mode, click that, and then go to your top right corner. It says view and make sure that you're in side by side gallery view. So that'll give you folks on the right-hand side and the screen on the left-hand side. And the final thing I'll recommend is there's a bar in between the faces and the screen that you can adjust. So if you push the bar to the left, you'll see more people's faces appear because you're minimizing the shared screen side. Um, so maybe we can pause if folks have questions or want me to repeat it. I'm happy to do so. 
Yeah, totally. Because this is when I learned how to do this, I was like, this is the best way to do Zoom at common power because I can see the humans. Anybody have any questions about that? Want to repeat? We're good. Sally's like, awesome. I will be using this from here out. Okay. All right. So we're going to let, um, uh, we're going to celebrate Action Academy um, in a way that we haven't yet at one of these community meetings. Um, they ended a cohort. They started talking about travel. They hired uh, a, an, another brilliant human being to that, that side of, of CP. Um, and then they became official in a, in a new way. So I'm going to hand it back off to Larcy here in a second. After that, though, we're going to jump into the work that we're doing, the event next week, the Virginia travel um, that Hibba is driving and that MJ and Kylie are, are taking a big part of. Um, and then, like Larcy said, we're going to get our reflection time at the end. I, I've been excited for this one for a while, and I, I can't wait to hear about um, what Action Academy is cooking up. Larcy. Thanks so much, Charles. This is definitely a big highlight to really talk about the work that CP Future crew leads and the CP Future team has been doing the past year and a half, actually. Um, so a quick recap, look at these faces. This is Action Academy summer cohort. We had six different, <coughs> sorry, that is my child. We had six different Hello. states that a lot of our students uh, zoomed in from and from, I believe it was like nine different universities from across our country. So this was officially our third cohort. And I believe about a year ago when Charles, David and I were talking about, oh, okay, we're gonna do this program, see how it goes, um, get as many young people as we can. And I think a lot of you have heard this story, you know, to, to get uh, Action Academy launched. I literally threw out a number and I said, what would be really awesome is if we could graduate like a hundred students out of the program in its first inception, the first year, and I am happy, happy, happy to celebrate and say that we have officially graduated 121 students from the program, from its first year. We are, we just wrapped up the third cohort. Um, and it really is just a proud moment for all the people who supported it, all the people who, who really saw the vision and really trusted in this process. And you're going to meet some of the crew leads tonight and all the stuff that we did that was super amazing and how we ran Action Academy. Um, and, and really, uh, I just want to say, like, the team was just brilliant. We were very creative in ways to get young folks engaged, really creative in ways to get guest speakers to come into this space and happy to also say we had our first international zoomer we had an international student um logging in every single week twice a week all the way from the other side of the world from the country of mongolia so we were meeting each other tuesdays and thursdays at like 10 o'clock in the morning and she was tuning in when it was like 3 a.m. her local time. And she did not flounder. She had a 100% attendance rate. Like she was really committed to the program. And it really was, it speaks to the folks who are coming in sharing knowledge. It speaks to the folks that, you know, created this community. Um, and so again, I could speak sit here and talk about all the wonderful things we did these past three sets of cohorts, but let's hear it from the folks who helped to lead it. So I'm going to kick it to Ben. Ben has been uh, a full-time person with us for the past nine months. Um, she recently uh, got accepted uh, in the graduate program at UW. She can speak on that in just a second, um, but she has had quite a journey being an Action Academy participant to a crew lead, to helping us get those thousands and thousands of postcards to Georgians when we were doing the runoff. And then she then became full-time with us. So I'm gonna kick it off to her. And then we have a bunch of other folks that is going to talk about the work we did with Action Academy. Go ahead, Ben. Hi, everyone. Um, pardon like the whole scenery. I'm actually in a parking lot, um, but 
So I wasn't aware that I was going to be talking about my graduate school status. I can drop a line on that later, but like I'll talk about Action Academy first. Um, as Larcy mentioned, we just finished out our third cohort in summer 2021, and I was part of the first cohort. And I think the mission of Action Academy then when I went through it during the first time was like, how do you get young people involved um, civically and politically? And that philosophy is still true um, throughout the course, but I think we have evolved into making civic engagement like a lifelong thing. Like a, how do you sustain that engagement and how do you both like go um, be are on ramp into it and then like off ramp, but then also on ramp again, you know, in your entire life, how do you make that something of a habit? And I'm really happy with the direction that Action Academy has evolved in uh, with that. And I'm just really proud of our progress. Julia, I'll kick it off to you now. Hi everyone, this is Julia. Um, for those who haven't met me, my name is Julia. I'm, I was the Action Academy crew lead for spring and summer and I was also an Action Academy student for the first summer cohort of 2020. And now I'm the donor engagement coordinator at Common Power. But tonight I'm here to talk about Action Academy. So our, for spring and summer, we partnered up with Heritage University in Washington State and Hood College in Maryland State. Um, and we ended up, because of through those partnerships, we ended up getting a huge amount of majority BIPOC students for both our spring and summer cohort, especially for our summer cohort, we had a lot more um, black and brown folks in Action Academy, which is one of definitely one of the greatest successes of Action Academy so far. Um, as a crew lead coming from, you know, as a crew lead for both spring and summer, that's kind of graduated through two cohorts. I'm really proud of the increasing diversity that you can physically see in our cohorts. Um, it's, it's shifting from like more white and female and Asian to more black and brown folks and males as well. So I'm really proud of the increasing diversity of our Action Academy cohorts. And I hope to see our Action Academy program grow in diversity. And I'd love to see it continue to grow nationally as well. It was really cool partnering up with some students on the East Coast um, and hearing the different perspective and views that are so different from the West. Hayden? Oh, oops, sorry. I didn't know if it, was, if it was me next or if it was Jessica next. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Hayden. Um, I was in Action Academy last summer with Ben and Julia, and then came on as a crew lead this summer, and also did some other internship work with CP Future. Um, but for me, I really, so uh, first talk about the speakers we had. So we had um, Tana Ingram come in, who um, worked at Virginia Tech and talked a lot about the different roles that you can take when you're um, engaging in activism and how that varies for different people. Um, and then we also had David and Charles come in. And then we had Dr. Scott and AJ come in and we had Bob Zellner as well, talking about his role experience in the civil rights movement, um, and what we can kind of learn from him. And then kind of for some personal development and growth that I experienced, um, really just learning more about educate like curriculum building you know things take longer than I expected but thinking about like how what's the best way to teach this thing and also how can we go into as much detail as possible within our time limits um, definitely something that we had all had a hard time with because there's so much that we wanted to go through um, so that quality of requiring due balance and then I also something I struggled with coming in was just being able, like just talking with students and engaging, you know, if we're having a discussion, I'm facilitating, acknowledging people and making up like a, having some sort of comment to transition into the, ne into the next comment versus just acknowledging. That's been very challenging for me, but I really felt like by the end of the program, I was much better at that. I like really enjoyed the makeup sessions and just getting to work with students more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, yeah, then I will kick it off to Jessica. Thanks, Hayden. Um, so I'm Jessica. I was part of the spring cohort in March, and then I became a crew lead for the summer cohort this June. And so our summer cohort was amazing, and a lot of them had an incredible journey with us in Action Academy. 
And so a big part of Action Academy that we do is that we actually really encourage individual action. So, you know, like that, like going out on their own and practicing and building those leadership and activist skills. And so a lot of our students, they were super proactive. A lot of them attended phone banks, lectures. And then what was actually really amazing to see with the most recent cohort in the summer was that like some of them even took on the task of teaching entire lessons about civic subjects to our cohort. And so like this not only requires a lot of research, but also a lot of leadership skills. So, you know, like they really decided for themselves that they wanted to reach out to us to leash, to learn and teach beside us and stand in front of their peers, which is super inspiring and amazing to see happen. And so, yeah, um, speaking of leadership, I know for a fact that some of our students have also graduated into becoming state team leads with us. And so I really hope that, I mean, like, I know that they will take some of the lessons they learned and not only use them, but to build them the next coming year. And I'm not exactly actually sure how many, how, what the exact number of Gen Z like state team leaders there are. I think maybe 10 last I heard, including myself. But yeah, um, there's a great number of us um, young students who are really taking action to their own hands. And I'm really excited for them to take Action Academy into something greater and for us to like work beside them and for you guys to also see like their amazing abilities and growth and to hopefully make some change in the light of what's happening right now. So yeah, I think that's all the updates for Action Academy unless there are more, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks, team. And we do have some folks who couldn't join us this evening because at the end of the day, they're still students and this is also back to school week. And it's also getting ready for uh, students to go back to in-person learning on their college campuses. Uh, but they are sprinkled as many places as we possibly can throughout our organization and the programming that we are doing. And a big, big shout out to Ben and Hayden for finishing a full weekend of civic engagement and civic events with the Rainier Scholars, full day Saturday and full day Sunday. Can you believe it? They've spent months in partnering with uh, Rainier Scholars so that we can host, they can host um, their civic retreat this weekend. And we just had our recap meeting. They loved every bit of it. And it looks like this is a permanent partnership moving forward with RS. Um, and then up next, this is the newest addition to the CP Future team. I'm so, so happy she was able to join us and she is with us um, permanently moving forward with creative programming in ways that we can continue engagement, in ways we can continue leadership development, also in ways to show how we approach this work um, and to meet students where they're at. So. I can talk about her all day, but I want you to hear from this amazing person, uh, Miss Sasha Lee, to share with us the upcoming programming in the fall. Oh my gosh, Larcy, you're always gassing me up in every meeting and, <laughs> and I love it, but um, no, thank you so much. Um, Hi, everybody. It is so great to see some familiar faces again. Um, for those who haven't met me, hi, I'm Sasha Lee. I'm uh, Common Powers slash CP Futures new Senior Education Program Manager, and I am so excited to be here. Um, I was originally a community partner, actually working with Larcy when she was in the beginning stages of talking about Action Academy. And so just seeing how it's grown over the last year and a half alone has been so exciting. And I was so of course, inspired and more excited when Larcy asked me to come on to uh, CP as a staff member and to continue doing great work like this. So hi, everyone. So great to be here. Um, so yes, as you've already seen, our crew leads are just doing incredible work. You know, they did the work themselves and then they're really passing on a lot of this knowledge and this inspiration to folks. Um, but we're doing a little bit something special for them as well, right? Um, so actually, I almost said this fall, it's, it feels like we've been talking about this fall for some time now. Uh, sometime now, excuse me, but now it's next week. We are taking off next week for a Virginia learning tour. And um, for folks who have been sort of in the circuit for some time, you may already be familiar with what a learning tour is, but really it's just, for those who don't know, it's just really this incredible opportunity to kind of combine theory with practice, right? So we're thinking about Sorry, there's like motorcycles. It's like fast and furious on my street right now. So pardon the noise. Um, and so really, it's a great chance for the crew leads to take sort of the theory and practice and put it together and meet folks on the ground, leaders who have done this in the past, folks who are continuing to do this now and visit these historical places that are 
really can be so heavy at times, right? But also so inspiring. So like I said, we are taking off next week. We'll be there for five days. Um, and actually, I had the privilege to put together um, a series of pre-departure sessions really to prepare our crew leads for this experience. And as you can see here on the slide, um, from the beginning, we started, we started talking about understanding the South, right, and the civil rights movement. Why did these two things clash and what were some similarities, right? Um, thinking about movement building, we had some really incredible people come in who are part of the CP family as well as community partners talk about the vision, the people, the work, what does it take to right, make these movements successful? Um, we, of course, had our folks um, internally, uh, AJ and David, who are such a big part of leading the session of politics of the rising South. We are talking about, you know, what is at stake really, right, in Virginia? What are the changing demographics there that are making this such a prime uh, place for progressive policies and candidates? Um, and then finally, our final session, which will be next Tuesday, we'll be talking about mental health, right? This is all heavy at the end of the day and as you are already seeing in this community meeting alone we'll be having some time for reflection and for community building and that's exactly what we'll be doing next week talking about how to really take care of oneself before during and after things like this um, and of course thanks you to the wonderful i don't know if anita's here in today's meeting but Anita has been absolutely amazing in helping us to develop the leadership aspects of this programming, you know, thinking about yourselves or excuse me, the crew leads thinking about themselves, right? Not just as leaders here in the CP space, right? But as leaders moving forward when unfortunately when they do leave us going out right into the world and into their communities. Um, let me think. Oh yeah, and then on the second slide. Perfect. Um, so just a little bit of a taste of where we'll be going. So we'll be touching down um, in DC and we'll make sure to spend a day and a half there or so, but the majority actually of our trip will be in Richmond and Char Charlottesville, Virginia. We're gonna be going to some amazing places, Harper's Ferry for anyone that's familiar. Um, that's where John Brown's raid was um, and really such heavy and fascinating history. We'll be checking out the National Mall, of course, in Capitol Hill. We have some contacts there and we'll get a chance to explore. And Virginia, right? We get to meet our partners on the ground, new Virginia majority. We're so excited and they're happy to host us at their headquarters. We'll get a chance to check out the American Civil War Museum. And then of course, finally, Danville Museum of Fine Arts and History. And that is where Bob Zellner um, and other colleagues were doing so much work there in terms of bringing folks together um, and integrating right a lot of the work that we have seen today. Um, but yeah, that's essentially sort of uh, the, uh, the bulk of what our trip uh, will encapsulate. And thank you everyone so much for being here and tuning in. Thanks so much for that quick update, Sasha. And we are so excited. A lot of the crew leads are helping us develop this new learning tour with a leadership focus um, design with the programming. They're gonna also help us um, and the rest of you who will be traveling to Virginia in the coming weeks, uh, probably what to do, what not to do since we are the first group to go out to Virginia and we'll give you all the updates and give you all of the tips. Um, and we'll share all of that with you all when we come back from our trip, because this is officially the first uh, post COVID or actually still during COVID um, trip that we'll be going out. And we have really made sure that safety and health and our health is, is the top priority for any participants that are going on these trips in the next coming weeks. Um, so we do have one major last update on this side um, of our organization. So go ahead, Charles, and go to the next slide. Um, we are officially a 501c3 organization known as Common Power Future. We got our letter this past Tuesday from the IRS officially, officially designating us um, as a 501c3 organization. Uh, it's been months in, in prepping and preparing and organizing that, working with the IRS, of course. So all of your tax dollars that are going towards the brightest of the brightest futures of the CP Future crew leads and all and everyone who was, who was going to participate in any of the CP Future programming, all those proceeds and donations are going to be tax deductible. So talk to Julia if you are interested in doing some donations. Um, hey, wait, quick question, quick question. Oh, yes. So yeah, definitely talk to Julia. Um, can you clarify for folks? So uh, the difference between what we were before and what we are now, because we, yeah. we could... We could do some of those things before, um, but now we have our own, right? 
Yes. So many of you know, or some of you may not know, we are a hybrid organization. We have a PAC and a super PAC, and we were fiscally uh, sponsored by Fuse Washington. So if you've donated on the tax deductible side, most of your donations, all of your donations went to Fuse Washington. And now that we have our own C3, you can directly donate to us. Um, and they, we are going to figure out all the different ways that, you know, we can meet you where you're at, where you want your dollars to go. Um, and David and, and Julia and, and also Charles will, you know, you'll have some conversations with them about where the dollars are going to be best needed in the next coming months, especially going into midterms and stuff. So uh, PAC, you can still donate. The Super PAC, you can still donate. And now that we have our own um, in-house C3, those dollars that you can donate to will all be tax deductible. Excellent. Awesome. Really good job on that, Larcy. I know that was a lot of good, a lot of hard work for you. Um, there are some moments in there where the federal government was like, hey, tell me about this, this uh, organization like skirts on the edge of politics, but doesn't do any heavy politics. Tell us about that. Um, but, but well done with that. Well done with that alongside um, your, your cohort that you ran. Um, okay, we're going to shift into, um, into field work on the non-C3 side. <laughs> we're gonna shift in the field work and we're gonna kick it to uh, Hibba and Crew. I don't know what's the nickname for your band. There's gotta be a band name. <laughs> and name every team lead who's in this room, take note. You all need band names. Um, Ooh, very good. good. Yes. Cause it's Team Virginia. We're gonna go with Team Virginia right now, straightforward to the point. Um, thankfully, I don't have to do too much talking right now because we have uh, two of our incredible Team Virginia leads here with us to talk about what's going on in Virginia. Uh, before I turn it over to them, I want to note that um, we've gotten some questions from folks who have been so patient um, and waiting to hear about what are we doing this fall in Virginia? How are we volunteering? Are we traveling? Um, the answer is yes to all of that. We're going to travel. It's going to be a great time. We're going to make a difference. Um, and I'm excited that we've been able to roll out some of those details to you already and more information is to come. But to hear specifics, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Kamanishi and Eve Smith, who are gonna talk about what's going on in Virginia. And they are two of our fabulous team leads there. So Chris, Eve, over to you. Thank you so much, Heba. And I wanna say a big thank you to Heba and Kylie who are helping us a lot because, um, Virginia is sort of on an expedited schedule, as I was told, and it's true. <laughs> so we are we are learning fast. So um, I'm Chris Kamanishi, and I'm one of the state team leads for Virginia, along with Eve Smith, who is here today. And we have two additional team leads, um, Brittany Souza and Abby Merritt, um, who will join us at future events. I'm new to Common Power and have uh, um, admired the work for a very long time. I'm based in Seattle and actually a third generation Seattleite. I work in the nonprofit sector. I've um, been a volunteer a lot and have worked with volunteers a lot. So I'm excited for this new opportunity. Um, I'm so glad that you're here this evening and I hope you will join us. Um, so I'll ask Eve to introduce herself and then I'll, I'll cover the um, Virginia sort of what's at stake portion and then give it back to Eve at the end to uh, hold, cover the travel portion. So Eve, do you wanna? Introduce yeah. Yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Eve. I just joined as a <laughs> team communications lead a couple days ago, and I did Action Academy during the 2020 election cycle. So I was part of the first cohort. Um, and I'm so excited that Action Academy is able to travel now because when we did it, it was all online. Um, and I'm, here, I'm excited to be here doing important work with just a really warm and thoughtful community. Um, I'm from Seattle. Right now I'm in California for school, but it's nice to have this Seattle community online that I can go back to. Thank you, Eve. Um, so Eve and I just talked this afternoon, so we're just kind of um, putting it together on the fly here. And thank you, Heba, for the talking points. I will just um, provide a little brief overview of what's at stake in Virginia. Um, a lot that's at stake in Virginia, including um, the governor's race, the lieutenant governor's race, attorney general, and more. And the upcoming election is on November 2nd. Um, there have been many recent wins uh, for the Democrats in Virginia, and they um, enacted the first state voting rights act in the South. Um, we want to continue to um, 
the momentum in the state. Uh, Virginia holds their elections in odd number of years. So the upcoming November election is important for the state, obviously, and, and also for the nation as it's also as it's often a bellwether for the midterms. Um, our local partner, as Sasha mentioned earlier, is New Virginia Majority, who we've worked with for the past three years. And as many of you have mentioned, they are um, widening the tent. They are reaching out to people of color, working class individuals, rural areas, and so on. So I'm very excited to meet them and work with together with them. Um, we do have um, the New Virginia Majority has a phone bank that we will be assisting with on um, September 15th, a Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. Um, Pacific time. And Heba, is there a sign up for that at some? Yes, I'm gonna drop the links in the chat here. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and I, did you wanna add anything more about Virginia, Heba? Um, I think this was great. The only thing I'll add is um, we're as Common Power, we're starting on the 15th and then every Wednesday after that, we'll have phone banking. Um, for New Virginia Majority is starting next week. So you're welcome to join them next week, but Common Power is officially starting on the 15th. Awesome, thank you. Um, and I'll turn it over to Eve now to talk about the travel to Virginia. Yes, so Common Power is traveling to Virginia. It's happening September 30th to October 4th, and then again, October 30th to November 3rd. And like Chris said, we'll be supporting our local partner, New Virginia Majority, and some background on previous work with Virginia is that Common Power has worked with Virginia since 2019, I believe, where we led two teams in 2019, one of age 50 and older, um, volunteers and one of millennial volunteers to knock on doors with New Virginia majority. Um, and we knocked on doors for the six days leading up to the elections and CEP helped flip um, Virginia blue that cycle and knocked on 7,000 doors. And we'll keep, we will be volunteering in Northern Virginia on this trip. And thanks to Kylie and Heba and others who have helped um, done the trip planning so far. Um, we almost have a block of hotels secured as well as rental cars. And we'll be launching our volunteering every morning from the hotel so people are encouraged to stay there. And the volunteering will be happening October 1st through 3rd, while the travel days are going to be September 30th and October 4th. And it's recommended flying out of the Dulles International Airport because it's the closest to where we'll be staying. And if you're joining us for the September 30th trip, please fill out the Team Virginia travel confirmation form, which I'm about to drop in the chat after you've booked a plane ticket. All right. Can I, can I just jump in for a second? You, this is like watching you and listening to, to you both talk about Virginia is super important. Um, and also you both are very impressive, brand new team leads, uh, brand new to like CP, like this part of CP, uh, there are folks here that have been with us for, uh, since the beginning are watching you and they're, um, they're probably pretty impressed. So well done, both of you, Chris and Eve. Yeah, truly 10 out of 10, no notes. You all are awesome. Um, that's, am I allowed to swear on this call? That's queen stuff right there. I'm not gonna swear, um, but thank you both so much. Um, I'm gonna stop talking now. No, more, more heaven is better for sure. Um, so this is, this is how, just to, to close up this part, this is how to get engaged, quick recap. Most of this they said already, um, but the biggest, thing here is next week, right, Hibba? It is. And I think uh, Kylie and or MJ uh, are going to walk through this. Oh, OK. Yeah, Charles. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, see, here you go. I knew something was going to mess up. There you go. Oh, there it is. Kylie and MJ. OK. All right. You're in the agenda. Yeah. Right Charles forgot to read the agenda. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's so great to see everybody. We're so excited. I am super hyped. 
just listening to Chris and um, Eve talk about um, traveling to Virginia literally just makes me so happy. Um, I was one of the people that traveled in 2019. Um, such a memorable trip for me in Richmond um, with the millennial um, team. And it was just an incredible experience. And I cannot wait to be there once more. Um, so I don't have to sell Virginia much because Chris and Eve did such a great job. But um, if you want to sign up for the team, you are more than more than welcome to do this. Um, please, have a, if you have the link to the sign up sheet, um, drop it in the in the chat so that folks. Um, sorry, my eye is like something's happening with my eye. But um, so folks can sign up for Virginia. We know what's at stake. We need to be in Virginia and support our partners. Um, New Virginia majority. I am so sorry. I don't know what is happening with my eye, but it's great. I'm really excited. I'm just crying. That's what's happening. I'm just like so excited that my eye is just like naturally just crying. Um, really excited. I'm going to pass it on to my amazing colleague, Kylie, to tell us about what's happening right now that you can be part of so that we get ready for Virginia and other states. Thanks, Kylie. Thanks, Maria. Um, hi, everyone. So great to see you all. Uh, it's awesome to see some familiar and new faces. Um, so yeah, as Maria said, there's a lot of stuff to get involved with um, coming up. The first being next week, next Wednesday, our state teams fair. Um, I'm so, so excited for this uh, hybrid event that's happening next Wednesday evening. Um, so hybrid meaning that you can join in person or virtually in a Zoom room just like this. Um, I'm, I'm just really pumped because I love the opportunity to see some people in the community in person. Um, it's always fun to see how tall everyone is uh, and kind of figure out like, oh, are you that person? Because, you know, Zoom can be funky. So maybe we'll have to get some good old fashioned like name tags out. Um, but I promise that it'll be a wonderful time. I'm so excited to get that opportunity. Uh, so there's a state teams fair, which is our field work launch uh, next Wednesday. Um, and then there's also gonna be some other upcoming events um, starting uh, soon, the weekly commonpower.io trainings. Um, so some folks may have heard inklings about this new online community that we'll be using um, that will officially launch on, at that state teams fair um, as well. And so more on that to come, but get ready for a really cool way for us to engage with each other. Um, we also have weekly volunteer 101s beginning that Hiba is running, which are gonna be awesome um, teaching our community. And, you know, all of us kind of dust, shaking off that dust, relearning how to, how to volunteer and do our, do our work well. Um, and then September 16th, uh, David is gonna be doing a lecture on the CP7 um, that I believe Hiba is gonna be helping with uh, too. So lots of great stuff, lots of amazing opportunities to learn. Um, and get involved. And so I'm really excited to be with you all on the journey. Yeah, thank you, Kylie. And just to end this up really quickly, actually, I'm realizing that this next point here, the researching your state for 2021 and 2022 is a great thing to do. But the Domke lecture is definitely going to be a great resource for that. Like if you want to understand and learn why exactly we're going to these states. Um, it's a great way to find out and a great way to research what state you might want to um, join, you know, in the next year, but also September 8th is going to be a great opportunity for all of us to be in community. And I'm really excited to see all of you in person. Um, Kelly and I have worked um, to put this together with, along with others uh, on our fieldwork team. Super excited. Look out for a cactus. Just, just saying. <laughs> on September 8th. Um, it's going to be fun. Thank you so much for, to, for, um, for your presence today. Looking forward to seeing you in person. And Hiba, um, oh. No, I was going to say, it's, yeah, Hiba's going to be here, right? Hiba is going to be here, y'all. You're going to meet Hiba in real, per like, in, yes. We'll see how tall Hiba is once we, <laughs> I want to see how, Mag how tall Maggie is, because Maggie's going to be here, Hiba. Um, Anita. Anita. Anita yeah. You'll get to meet the whole team, the whole crew in person, so. Very cool. Yeah. Um. Have any anything to say about your height before you move on, or? I just, um, I think I'm just going to spoil it because I don't want there to be any surprises. I've been in this position before. Um, I am five foot seven inches. 
please don't expect any taller, any shorter. Um, five foot seven. Thank you very much. I look forward to meeting everyone. <laughs> I just want to say that the the height conversation was sparked by Hibba. Okay, this is like a somebody who's a she is has uh, is an expert at remote working, and so the, the height question is one that she she got us all thinking about. So um, that's why we kicked it to her. Um, Okay, uh, I think that's it. If, if there's any questions about the work that we're doing, um, go ahead. You've probably already direct messaged people. Um, you can drop it in the chat now if you have any questions. Uh, otherwise, we're going to we're going to move on to the, the, the reflection well, section here. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. We have a poll. I don't know if this is going to become a regular part of these community meetings. Oh, but right. It should. It definitely should. <laughs> I just dropped it in the chat. You should fill it out at your leisure, but like preferably before, you know, like in the next 30 minutes, just so we have a sense, but just a casual low pressure poll. What is it? What is it about? What is it? It's not about height. What is it about? Man, maybe I should have done that. Um, no. <laughs> it's about which of our CP7 states you're most excited or interested in learning about at the fair next week. This is good. Hibba knows how to bring the fun. Um, we appreciate that, Hibba. Um, so yeah, definitely fill that out and let us know what you all are excited about for next week. Um, this section, you know, I saw some some folks had to had to drop off here and um, totally understand that. We thought about moving this to the top. Um, but one of the things that that happens when 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 bad things happen. Uh, that's even adjacent to the work that we do is we have to um, and not stop the good work that we're doing, uh, especially now at the the kickoff of so much important stuff. Um, so many seeds planted by folks like Hibba and Larcy and Maggie um, dealing with uh, an assault on our freedoms and our rights is a long game. It really is. And we've got to stay focused on the stuff that we're doing, on the good work that we're doing that will address some of these things. That said, none of it replaces um, the impact that it makes on you, on your uh, mental health, on your hopes and dreams, on um, your ability to like get through a day. So w like we do when we're at our best, we want to have the conversation now. And um, this is like the last time I'm going to speak <laughs> during this meeting because um, this is really a conversation for, for women to lead um, and uh, women identifying folks. So thank you, Larcy, for taking this on. Thanks so much, Charles. Um, you know, I want to just open it up. I think, you know, I am going to be turning 40 in about a month. Um, so I have been pretty privileged in my adult life that all that I can at least recollect that I've been able to make really good decisions on certain things and certain things have allowed me to. And of course, certain things I don't have access or didn't get access to, but I actually wanna hear from um, some of you seasoned folks out there just to kind of see where you're feeling. Cause I want to get inspiration from you. I am committed to this work as many of my young colleagues are, but we are looking to you all in this moment um, to give us inspiration and give us energy. Because I know that you probably feel so tired and you're probably like, really? This is where we're at again? And I just need energy from you and inspiration from you to keep my head in the fight, to keep my head in the game and not lose hope. And knowing that this is a lifestyle I have chosen.
Okay, I'll talk. <laughs> um, I'm mad uh, and I am really hoping that this is a wake up call 